Hello and welcome to this Fund in Focus brought to you by Livewire. My name's James Marley, I'm a co-founder of Livewire Markets and I'm joined today by Russell Pillimer, who's the CEO of Pengana Capital Group. Russell, good to see you. Thank you for having me. Today we're going to be talking about the Pengana Private Equity Trust, which is listed on the ASX under the ticker code PE1. Uh, it's the only listed diversified private equity investment on the ASX. Russell, why did you decide to bring this product to market? So private equity is a fantastic asset class. Uh, it's generated lots of returns for investors over many years. Uh, the problem being that uh, retail and average investors, uh, even sort of high net worth investors, don't have access to top tier global private equity. So if you look in the, uh, in the offshore markets or even the local markets, the big family offices, uh, the big sovereign wealth funds and pension funds, etc., might have 10 or even 20 percent of the investments in private equity. Um, but um, there was no form in which uh, regular investors in Australia could get access uh, to this. Um, so we put PE1 together, put into a listed form uh, in order to bring that private equity to, uh, to regular investors. Okay. So for people that that don't know about PE1, what's the philosophy behind the, the strategy behind the fund? If you get into the right private equity managers, uh, you should be able to earn uh, nice sort of, uh, you know, mid-teens type returns um, over time, significantly more than you could earn in uh, listed equity markets. Um, and that's because there's some sort of illiquidity premium as well as some benefits from investing with some of the best private equity uh, managers in the world. So if we can get uh, investments into those with those private equity managers and get a lot of them, so we're very diversified, we don't have to take uh, any major risk on any one particular manager, uh, that's a fantastic trade uh, for investors. So we bring that to investors and they are able to put that into their portfolios and not have not only this you know, high performing asset class, but also an asset class which has lower volatility than uh, listed equities as well. And so what are some of the exciting opportunities that investors are getting exposure to through PE1 at the moment? Uh, so uh, PE1 in general invests in non-exciting opportunities. <laughs> so, so most of the companies we actually invest in are just good, solid cash flow companies. Uh, the That's a very Pengana trade, isn't uh, it? Exactly, it is. The private equity managers are on the lookout for these, these, good, uh, these good companies, high cash flows. They are able to um, invest uh, not only equity, but also get some uh, good gearing or debt. Uh, when they when they acquire these companies, um, and uh, through that they get this you know, a, a leverage type of return with lower risk, and um, so that's in general what what we do. We do have some exciting uh, opportunities in there because just over time we've picked up a few of these. They don't dominate the portfolio by any, any means, yeah. uh, but we have something like a SpaceX in there, which is a really exciting uh, opportunity. I think one of the most fantastic uh, private uh, companies uh, in the marketplace. Um, uh, but as I say, those are sort of few and far between. And we have uh, in excess of 450 underlying exposures. So if you think about it, each of the exposures um, are quite small yeah. or very small. Um, and so you're not taking any major bets. Okay, so quite diversified. Liquidity is um, part and parcel with private equity and is a necessity, but for a listed product, Investors want to be able to tran transact and have that daily liquidity. How do you manage that? that yes, mismatch? so here's the problem with private equity. Whilst it generates these fantastic returns, it's very hard for a regular t investor to actually get invested in them um, and uh, do it in a way that works for them with some sort of liquidity. So the average private equity fund would take your money, uh, they draw it down over a period of time, so you can't give them all the money up front. So they might draw it down over three or four years. They invest it for a while and then start giving it back to you. So the IRR um, of that or the rate of return is really good. Um, but investors are suffering from having to keep a lot of money in the bank until it's all called. They suffer from actually getting the money paid back to them when they'd rather the private equity manager just kept it in their funds and continued generating uh, these types of returns. And during that 10 year period, investors can't actually access their money. You can't go and cash it in. It's not like a listed equity where you can cash, cash it in. So you stuck in this for a long time. Yeah. You can understand why that really appeals to a large family office or you know, sovereign wealth fund, etc. But for a regular investor, that lack of liquidity or that 10 year time horizon is just too much to bear. So what we did is we put our private equity portfolio, which are, um, which are illiquid underlyings, we put them into a listed vehicle. 
So investors now can actually uh, trade in and out of private equity by trading in and out of the vehicle. So it's quite a simple solution. It's not unlike, uh, say for instance, a, a property trust where um, properties are illiquid assets, but you put them into a property trust and therefore investors can get in and out of them, uh, in and out of the underlying exposure at any single point in time. So a similar type of concept. Yeah. Uh, a trend we've seen is that a lot of companies, a lot of exciting companies are, are choosing to stay private for longer or, or private forever. And we are so you do see research that the returns coming out of private markets, as you mentioned earlier, um, can be better than public markets. What's driving that? Uh, public markets have become uh, quite unfriendly to smaller companies. So it's very uh, expensive to be a listed uh, company. Um, and also, you know, all the compliance and legal costs, etc. cetera. Um, but also you find now that the uh, list, listed market investors are focused on the big companies. So a lot of money is driven by indexes. Um, ETFs, etc. And so, but that's all focused on the larger companies because they make up the majority um, of the index. So these small companies uh, get left behind. So um, a lot of small companies now don't want to be listed, or some companies that were listed are now now private. And as you said, there's this trend of staying private for longer or or, for, or forever. Um, and uh, so you've got those factors. But the other factor is that private equity is actually just genuinely. Um, a better form um, of for running your company. So if you're in the listed market uh, context, you need to do, in the US markets, you need to do quarterly reporting. You can imagine how bad that is for a company to be reporting on a quarterly uh, basis. You know, every quarter you focused on beating your numbers from the last quarter. You've got no time to sit back and say, what is the strategically right position uh, for us to take? So you find that companies that actually operate in that environment are very inefficient, whereas companies that operate in a private environment, they can take that longer term approach. And a longer term approach is definitely better for de generating underlying value. Yep. Let's talk about the investor. What is the ideal investor for the fund or who does it suit? And what sort of time horizon should they be considering? This investment is for everyone. So it could be for a, just a regular investor who's got a couple of thousand dollars to invest all the way up to a large family office who's got lots of money to invest and want to get into private equity and want to get, get into it right here and now. So um, a, a lot of those really larger investors like the family offices, um, they, um, uh, they don't like the, the drawdown nature of funds and they actually want to get set right here and now thinking that this is a good environment in which to have your money in yep. the ground. And with P1, you can get into that uh, straight away. So it, it suits um, the full range um, um, of investors. In terms of the uh, time frame, uh, we always say that it, you should invest for at least a cycle, which may, might be five or seven uh, years uh, through a cycle. But really, um, with, with, with P1, you have that flexibility to be able to get in and out. And the price hopefully is reflective um, of the underlying values. From time to time, there might be a little bit of a disconnect. Uh, but in general, you're able to be master of your own destiny and decide uh, you know, how long you want that period to be. Okay. Well, let's take that long-term view. If you look out over the next Okay, what do you think are, are some of the, the exciting opportunities in private equity? You mentioned earlier about staying private for longer or never going public. So there's a lot of um, companies that will transition, family owned companies that will transition to the next generation. Um, and a lot of that is looking for private capital. Um, so the private equity players uh, play very well in that space. And you'll find there's a, there's a lot of that activity um, coming, coming to market. Um, so if you, with those private equity funds who focus on those businesses, you should be able to do pretty well from the range of opportunities. Uh, the other thing is that these companies who do stay private for longer are constantly looking um, for other sources of capital. Um, uh, you might find situations where there's secondary sales, where they can't actually, they don't want to go to market, but the underlying investors actually need to exit for, for whatever reasons, for their own purposes. Um, and so uh, if you can do well in private equity secondary, um, you can usually buy these secondaries at discounts in the marketplace for some structural reasons. Um, not only do you get the really great returns that are coming from private equity, uh, but you're always, or, or also able to actually pick them out uh, as a, a, on a discount basis to begin with. So you can get a super normal type of return uh, from the secondary market. Well, Russell, thank you very much for coming in and joining us today and giving us a bit of background on the Pengana Private Equity Trust. For those of you watching at home, the ASX code is PE1. Russell, thanks again. Thank you.